Hey everyone, so let's talk for a moment about snare rolls. What are they and how can you use them in your music? So really quickly, what is a snare? Well, first of all, a snare is a type of drum. It looks like this. You usually hit it with a stick like this. And one of the magic secret things about a snare is that underneath the skin, there are some strings, some metallic strings that cause a rattling sound when you hit it. As a consequence, a snare drum is a very prominent mid-range element that takes up a lot of space and demands a lot of attention, and therefore it's very good when you want to create big bursts of energy. It's a very common drum type to find in synthesized drums, like in this TR-909, or in basically almost any other drum machine ever. There's a lot of synthetic versions of snares as well, and we can work with both, particularly because I'm going to be working in techno today, I'm going to be using the snare of the 909, which is classic. The most frequent place where you're going to find a snare drum is in the regular house or techno beat that goes booms, 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 right? On every second kick drum, you would do booms, cats, booms, cats. Sometimes people say boots and cats and boots and cats, right? And the cats, that k that splash of energy signifies a snare. But that's not what we're here for today. Today we're here for the second most common use scenario of a snare, which is the snare roll. And the snare roll is just a kind of a flourish, a musical trope, an idea that happens in a buildup towards a transition to create energy and create almost like a wall of noise so that then when the transition happens and the beat start, there's a lot of contrast between the before and after. Let me show you two different implementations of this, one in harder techno and one in more chill house. And we'll just look at some of the features that are kind of essential to making a good one. We'll go into the DAW together now, but before we go any further, like the video and subscribe. I haven't said that in a while, so it feels kind of weird. Leave a comment below to show me some love. And now let's go look at these examples together. Okay, so for this first example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the TR-909 plugin from Roland, and I'm gonna put that into a Valhalla reverb, and I'm going to put that into an LFO tool to make it pump slightly. I'm going to automate the volume, and I'm going to automate a filter that opens up over time over that. I wanted to have a bit of a psychedelic feeling, so it's not quite just some dry snare hits, but it's just this kind of wall of energy that builds. Let's listen to it. So let's solo that just, just for the end of it. Boom. And then another important point is when you look at this, this is four sixteenth notes and the velocity starts low then goes to medium and then goes high on the last one. So in terms of velocities, you have this kind of a pattern is very common, but then also another common pattern would be to accentuate the third one. So it would be the third one or the fourth one. Usually you want one of those two to be your accent because then that'll pull against the kick and it'll feel like it's still communicating this kind of pumping feeling that the kick will resolve when it comes back in. Okay, so here I've got a little transition that could use a snare roll. Let's play the transition. Got no synthesizers. Snare roll. And then we just go into the beat. So this is a sketch, this is a, a skeleton that I'm building for a Face the Sun track. We're going to be adding synthesizers on top of this. Uh, but the drum groove is in a pretty tasty place. I quite like it. And so to add a little bit of spice to this transition, let's make a snare roll. So the key elements of a snare roll would be to get yourself some kind of 909 snare. We'll try a few different types just to see what they sound like. But let's start with the 909. And we go in and we need to make ourselves a little clip let's say a two bar clip, do command shift M over this time to make a new MIDI clip. And we're gonna find ourselves a snare drum. That's the one. And we're gonna program it every 16th note. Now, because I am lazy, I just wanna program it once and not so many times. So I'm just gonna loop this in and I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four. So that now it's just gonna play consistently. And so what we get then is this. It's a bit, um, 
It's a bit machine, machine gun like, <laughs> right? We want it to kind of pump. We want it to have some subtlety to it. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to change the velocity a little bit. So we're going to do one of the two patterns that we were talking about earlier. We're going to do either this one as the accent that feels like this, or this one is the accent, which feels like this. It has a different rhythmical pull and you gotta imagine what people will be dancing like to your track, right? So I think that over the last few, you know, sessions that I've had, I've preferred this particular pattern. So let's see what this feels like in context if I actually play it. Totally fine. Totally fine. This could be it. This could be it. I might add some delay, maybe a little bit of reverb, could automate some things, maybe saturate it to make it a bit more punchy. On the snare drum, let's look at what parameters there are. Just like on the actual TR909, there are tune, snappy, tone, and level. And especially, I think the tone, let me see what that does. So, here, let's loop this so we can really feel the differences. It's a much more sharp attack and this one's more splashy snappy takes away that that white noise that we really want so we want to keep that cool let's see what it would sound like if we did it with an 808 core kit instead not bad not bad but not as exciting as the 909 in my humble opinion let's listen to it in the context It doesn't splash out quite as long as the 909 one. I would want it to have more decay. So I would probably look into some creative delays and reverbs to make it feel more splashy. Just for completeness, let's see what a 707 would sound like. Not bad, it's a different vibe entirely. A 606. A 505. Again, a different vibe altogether. And of course, you don't have to stick to the classic Roland machines. You can do literally any other drum machine that you like. The concept stays the same, right? But for me, what I like about the 909 is how splashy and white noisy it is. I prefer that, you know, if you look at a snare drum on the spectrum analyzer, you'll see that there's, that there's two sections to it, kind of, roughly speaking. Here, let me solo this. There's this peak here around 200 Hertz. And then there's all the white noise up here. And so if you, for example, turn down snappy, then you only hear this peak over here, which is kind of like wood, the wood hitting the skin, right? And then up here is like the white noise of the metal resonating. And of course, down here, you have a whole load of low end garbage that you're definitely going to want to roll off at some point, because that really is, this is what people talk about when they talk about cleaning up your low end, right? That's exactly the kind of thing you don't want. So cool. So what I like about snares in this context is the splash at the top. I'm not, I like this to exist, but I don't like this to be accentuated. And so what, that's what I really like about the 909 one. And so like you saw in my techno example, don't be afraid of turning this into more of an abstract thing that over time you automate so that it just rises in subconscious energy. And there you go. That's how I use snare rolls. Now, before we go, I want to show you one tip, which is a forbidden tip, which you should definitely not do. <laughs> It is a cardinal sin of EDM right here. It is the EDM snare buildup. This is different from a snare roll, but it is also similar in some ways. This is, this is a technique that is not really to my taste, but I think maybe some of you will get something out of it anyway. What you'll do is you take yourself a four bar loop and what you're going to do is you're going to do a snare on the downbeat. One, two, three, four, as if it's a kick drum, right? And then you're going to do that again. And then every time that you do it, that you reach the bar, you're going to double. You're going to go like this, do it again, but you're going to double again. So now we're playing every 16th note. And I think we're just going to continue that. But then even for fun, I believe we can go down to the 32nd note over here as well. So 32nd note. Now I didn't do any vol velocity automation, but see what this feels like, right? So it goes like this.
<laughs> there we go. Let's play that again without the loop. <laughs> you know what? It actually could be worse. It could be worse. It's not even that bad. But um, the, the reason I say don't do this, I mean, I'm just being silly, really. It's because it's associated with big room EDM, Tomorrowland main stage, 2010s kind of Martin Garrix style of EDM. Which, um, which just is personally not what I try to make. So I generally don't use this as a technique, even though just using this technique in this context didn't even feel that bad. I guess it also comes with the same, with like, with the particular synthesizer treatment and the particular sound design of that era that generates the entire genre. So maybe don't be afraid to use this. I don't know. I would call this the snare buildup rather than just a snare roll. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's any formal names for these things, but that's just me trying to make sense of all of this. Anyway, if you use any of these techniques, come show me on the Discord channel what you do with this. If you want to learn in a more structured context, follow my Foundations of Electronic Music full course. Follow Torque and Face the Sun on SoundCloud. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.